Thank you, Dean Hong. And thank you for thank hosting. You. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jin Hong Zhang, and welcome again to our weekly uh, gathering here. Uh, today, uh, you know, before we have talked about uh, uh, financial planning, right, uh, the four qu quadrant uh, financial planning, instead of focusing on the financial assets, we also have the core assets, which are our dreams, our passion, our skills, uh, and then um, our values, right? And then the second one is our experience, um, our education, our experience. Uh, you know, these are also our assets and then contribution. Uh, mm -hmm. So today we have this amazing leader, youth leader, Mei Jingji. And mm -hmm. I call her Mei Jingji because <laughs> we met at a Indian, uh, an Indian uh, meditation retreat and in India, you know, we call each other G. It's a reverence, it's a revered of the God in each other. So Mei Jinji has been amazing. She went to meditation and she came back. She said, I want to bring all these uh, great uh, approach to our youth and uh, help people, help youth to love themselves and, uh, uh, you know, develop leaders. So she started this uh, uh, Youth Leadership Festival. So uh, today, Mei Jinji is gonna talk about uh, how she, she learned to be a sovereign being and mm. can, who can think and lead uh, for herself. And then after that, she also share a little bit about uh, the Youth Festival and how you can register and uh, learn and grow as a sovereign being, as a leader. So mm -hmm. Mei Jingji, go ahead. Thank you, Jing Hangji. Yes, so as Jing Hangji mentioned, uh, we connected through this Oneness Academy that's very, very powerful, that really transformed my way of being and thinking. Uh, before I was a very independent human and financially independent and really externally independent in many different aspects of my life. But the um, the being wasn't very independent. I still very was very dependent on other people. I was very much of a ple a people pleaser, and through that, I was never really happy or fulfilled. Because as we all know, when we try to please others, you're they're never you can never please you can never and you can never please others to an extent where it's there's fulfillment. It's always gonna there's always lack. There's always more. So with that said. Uh, I went on a journey to figure out what is a sovereign being, right? Like, how can I become really truly sovereign? And what is sovereignty? So sovereignty to me, I mean, sovereignty means different things to many different humans, but really sovereignty is being independent of your thinking, of your being, of who you are. So really understanding yourself before being able to change anything else outside. So sovereign is power, right? So for me, becoming a sovereign being is a was it's still a transformation and it's a journey, but it's a transformation that is so important and it's literally my life's mission, not only for myself, but to also guide other young beings, adults, to really step into the sovereignty. Because sovereignty is really where we find the freedom, not financially, not through traveling, not anything external. Sovereignty is really internal. And that's why I... I preach it so much and I I really, I walk this path because sovereignty is what really fulfills our souls. A lot of the problems that we're seeing with youth right now is that they don't know who they are. They are walking on this in this earth and there's these questions of who am I? What am I? What is my role in life? What is my essence? They know that they're curious and they wanna know, but they don't know where to walk or where to find these tools. So it's a it's a world that we're living in that's fulfilled with technology. So the questions become bigger and the questions become even broader in scope because now we are bringing the worlds together, different countries, different nationalities, cultures. So really the confusion becomes even stronger for, for young minds. They really don't understand who they're supposed to be and what are they supposed to be? What role are they supposed to play in society? Is it the role that, con that that's conditioned for, that's been conditioned to them from generations before? What is it? So 
there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uncertainty with youth. And because of also the technology, which is a great tool, it's not going to go away. It's it's also a huge distraction on on really understanding who we are because there's so much there's so many different people out there that's that are that are doing different things and we think that that's what we should follow or we just get distracted and we forget our true essence. So this this sovereignty is really stepping back into ourselves and really seeing what is going on in here, like inside my soul, inside my being, that's wanting to come out but it's being blocked by the mind, the mind that's seeing all these distractions, the phones, everything outside of them, the conditioning of the society, the education that some, some people receive. And if we can just block out that mind and really connect back to our hearts, to our bodies, to our beings, that's when we can really connect to our true essence. And that's when you truly step into that truly powerful sovereign being, right? The sovereign being that is independent, Imagine having kids, youth, as your children that know who they are and they're stepping into this world with certainty and they know, mom, dad, this is where I'm going. This is, I'm certain about this. I have no doubt. Yes, I have fear because I don't know what's happening in front of me, but at the same time, it's, it's, I'm committed to this mission. So I'm going to keep moving forward because I am independent in my thinking, no matter what anybody says, no matter what fears are out there, that's trying to like hold me back. I am stepping into this because I am, I am stepping from the inside, from my body out, not from the mind. The mind is what blocks us to really create in that expansive state. So one of the things, what my mission in life is really to, to help young adults step into this sovereign being, to step into this true leadership, which is the leading of oneself. If we can understand how to lead ourselves, we can lead the world. We can lead companies, we can lead humanity, we can lead anything if we really understand how to lead ourselves first. And that's one of the biggest um, mishaps that I see in, in, in how we're teaching leadership nowadays. We're teaching a lot about how do you lead others? How do you lead corporations? How do you lead teams? But we forget about ourselves. And this is the true, this is how we really, this is how we change the world by first changing ourselves. So with the, with the, with the festivals that we have, the summits, the leadership summits, the workshops that we do at universities, we, we focus on that, the leading oneself with certainty. So really helping these young minds understand that if they want to create billions of dollars, if they really want to create huge companies, if they want to become really successful in their careers, as artists, as dentists, as lawyers, they really need to step into that sovereignty where they're not conditioned of how things should have done in the past, nothing in the past, it's in the present and it's in their mind that's just like expanding. So it's coming from the heart. It's like, I, what I say is the heart is the compass and the mind is the creation. So this is what we're creating from the minds, but really it's coming from the heart. And that's a sovereign being. That's it's a true independent being. And that's really what we want to build in humanity, these youth. And everybody has it inside them. It's not, it doesn't matter what culture you come from, how much money you have, not even how old you are. If we all have it inside us. We just it just gets lost from all these distractions, especially with the technology, like I was explaining earlier, that gets really it gets really it gets it gets fussy and and foggy and cloudy and by the time we know it we can't even see because there's so many clouds in front of us we can't see the sunshine anymore so this sovereignty is really where we step into that sunshine and we connect to that to that true essence of ourselves so these this these workshops these festivals these summits that we have we started we started doing them annually which is the goal but now, since we really want to do them internationally, internationally, because the goal here is not only to build out spaces for young minds to come together and step into this true essence, where we're giving them, this is the beautiful part of the, of the event spaces that we're creating. We're not only creating an event space or an event or a, a space, an ecosystem for young minds to come together, but we're bringing in different mentors and different wisdom from different parts of the world that come in and plant a little seed in our minds. And from those seeds, we can say, ah, I like that seed. No, you know what? I don't like what that lady's saying. I'm not, I'm gonna ignore her, but I like this lady or I like this gentleman. And you just start picking 
that's its sovereign being. One that can really pick and choose what is that, that, that aligns with them and then create their own from there, their own wisdom, their own creation from there. So we're not... We're not giving them, this is what, how you should think. This is the book that you that, that we run. So when people ask me for my for the curriculum for RQ Global, it's it's honestly, it's there's not one curriculum. Yes, what RQ Global does best is we create workshops that are interactive and experiential because from my experience and how, how I learned as a student of life is experientially. So I learned through experience. So I curate workshops that where we, we put them in groups and they play games, they interact with each other, some are reflective, so they can really understand the wisdom that has been given to them. So that's what really RQ Global does. But besides that, we bring different mentors from different parts of life, from different types of philosophies and ways of thinking. So the so the young minds can say, ah, I like that. No, I don't like that. This is how we really merge the worlds together. This is why it's so important for us to also bring the indigenous wisdom in, into these teachings because it's the foundation of how we used to think and it's been lost. So it's really just bringing these, this ecosystem for us to become our own sovereign beings from the learning and the teachings that are being brought to the table. So it's super, super important for us to bring different aspects of life and, and different people that are successful in different areas of life. So we bring people that are experts in AI. We bring people that are experts in future of currency. We, be, we bring experts that are entrepreneurs, run $8 million companies. We bring leaders. We bring people that are like indigenous and know nature and know the power of the healing of, of Mother Earth or Grandmother Earth. We bring in Indian wisdom, like ACOM, the Oneness Academy that I went to, that I went to live in. So they're partnered with us as well. So they 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 give us the wisdom. They give us wisdom as well. We bring different different mentors in different aspects. We're in this festival. We're gonna have somebody that's gonna be also teaching in the morning. One of two of the mornings is gonna do Jing Jing Kong. It's a Chinese martial arts that's spiritual. It's mind, body, and spirit in the morning. So we we will do yoga, but we'll also have this beautiful practice that's ancient Chinese practice called, it's called Xi, 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 Xi Hong, Xi Hong. So I love it because this is how we really nurture our, our, our beings by really grasping different aspects of different cultures and the food also, right? We don't just give them the same food that you will find in a Western place. We give you a little bit of everything, some Asian, some Indian, some... So your mind can really explore different, not only taste buds, but hearings from everything. So it's just a, it's a beautiful space that really nurtures that sovereign being. And that's what we're focused on in, in everything we do. So not only the, the festivals and the events, but also the workshops, the community events and the virtual events, because we also have virtual summits every four, every four months where we bring different youth from all over the world. Our last one this month had, translation in Portuguese and Spanish. And this next one, which is the, the festival that we're having in July, we are gonna do a live stream and we're gonna have translators in Chinese, Portuguese and Spanish. So it's very important for us to be able to have those translators because this is how we unite and we, we really break those barriers down and say, oh, you don't speak English, it's okay. We got you. This is how we connect together because we're all one regardless of, what language we speak, where we live, what time zone we're living in. So it's that's the idea behind RQ Global and the movement and what I stand for. And I invite everybody to, to join and, and bring your kids, if you have kids, your grandchildren, yourselves, so if you want to join the virtual, the virtual live stream, which is going to be really, really powerful. So you can join from anywhere in the world and and see the wisdom that we offer. So yeah, that's that's about it. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I went off for a second. I get really inspired sometimes and I just start going. Yeah. But it's amazing. Thank you, Meiji. You're always excited and I know you're passionate about your cause. Um, can you uh share a little bit more, you know, specifically how you like your journey, right? How you, you know, before how you we would like and then through whatever experiences, you know, how you transformed, uh, or is there a moment of transformation uh, like that, or your, including your challenges and struggles? Uh, mm. Yeah, how you become 
somebody who's so confident and so much passionate about uh, serving people and uh, who's so powerful that make this event happen from zero you know, to to just the fruition. So can you share that uh, with us, your personal experience? Thank you. Yeah, sure. So my background, mm -hmm. uh, my great grandfather's Chinese. My my grandfather, my great grandfather migrated from China to Mexico, and then from Mexico we migrated to USA. So that resiliency is in my being. So it's really almost like part of my 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 genetics, uh, the resiliency, and also the flexibility of being able to 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 adapt to different movements of life. So that comes easy to me. What didn't come easy was the the really stepping into creating in presence, in in trust. So for the most part, I my background is international business. That's what I graduated in college from. And then I went into the transportation industry. I, I sold 18 wheelers. I moved logistics around the world. So I was in that industry for about seven years. I made a lot, a lot of money. And I was never fulfilled. I did real estate as well. I was a real estate investor. I had a real estate license. I also, I traded stocks. I I love finances because to me, finances was my freedom. So I dove really deep into it, but I didn't realize that that's not freedom. The true freedom is internal. It's our internal state. And that's what I learned in, in India. It took me to quit my security of my job, which was a more than a six-figure job, uh, corporate America and travel the world and go search, seeking, seeking, searching. What is the answer? Why am I not happy? Why is, what is true freedom? So I went, I went on a mission for the last four years to, to find this freedom. So I traveled to over 35 countries. And I, while I was doing that, I was building e-commerce businesses. So really learning, transitioning my skills from from face-to-face -face sales, like the old school way of selling, because that's the transportation way of selling, the, the, the trucking way of selling, to into uh, digital sales, right? So understanding how do you sell online? How do you create funnels? How do you how do you how do you create copy? Right. So so I, I transitioned my skills to, uh, in that process from from face to face to digital sales. But besides that, I was really seeking that freedom. And through that, I went to the jungles of of uh, Peru, and I really dove in with the uh, with the Incas, and I hung out with Quechuas, and I I was really on trying to understand like what is what is this happiness that I can't find. So I was in the jungles of Colombia. I hung out with the Kuna Indians in the in the Caribbean and the Pan in Panama, and I just traveled all over with the Mayans, with the Aztecs in Mexico, with my with my with with my roots and from that i was living in saudi arabia one of those explorations in in riyadh and i met a lady that said major you should go to india because this is this is what you're seeking and i said mm, interesting okay kind of ignored it kept on my mission but then after like really restlessly searching i found i said okay i need to go to india so that's when i went to india no idea what it was. I didn't even Google it. I just said, I'm going. I just showed up pretty much two weeks after I had spoken to, to the monks. And I dove in like I usually do, just head first like a penguin. And I learned so much, completely transformed my life. It really made me realize how much suffering I had inside me, how much, how much fear I actually had. I thought I was a very fearless human. I traveled the world by myself. I built businesses. I made money. I was independent externally. But I wasn't an independent sovereign being. I was just an independent human being, right? So I I didn't realize how much I was actually missing in my life until I started really diving into my, my inner being and seeing truly what was going on in here. And I paid for, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in uh, conferences, seeing Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Grant Cardone, all the... Uh, self-development people around in the USA really looking searching for that for answers like I went all over the world and I really hung out with really top-notch mentors but it wasn't until I dove in word that I really understood what was happening so that's why it's so important in what we do with RQ Global that we we dive inward with the with our with the youth so then we can come out most of the times we're like trying to fix the outside 
and we forget the inside and that's why they, that's why nothing changes because the inside is the root this is this is where it all starts the inside so this is why this is this is really where the transformation started and that was only about a little bit more than a year ago and from that i just started taking action and i realized how important it was for me to share these tools to for humanity to humanity and I've been traveling around the world for a very long time. So it's very easy for me to just make it global pretty quickly and scale it quickly globally um, and just share the tool. So with a digital marketing um, digital marketing background that I have, it makes it also easy to be able to connect with people online. But at the same time, yeah, just I, the community and the in-person space is something that nobody can take away. And that's why we do these festivals, these annual events in person, because that's where we really connect as humans, right? This is what our foundation is, the hugs, the beings, the seeing each other's eyes, and really just feeling each other's energies in presence that changes everything. So we do virtual events because it's super important so we can have people from all over the world to join together. But the in-person events are super powerful and that's why we build them every year and we want different people from different cultures to come and this one specifically we've had people from colombia coming in from guatemala from mexico from around the around the country from california colorado texas so it's very important for people to come from all walks of life in in one space and really connect as one so that's that's my mission and when it comes to my journey, it's still a journey. It's it's always going to be a journey. But the beautiful part about it is that as I keep helping others, I keep helping myself. So it's like a, it's a beautiful karma. So I'm just very blessed to to be here and to be on this mission, because the more I grow, the more others grow. And it's just it becomes a beautiful garden. So that's that's what uh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. you. I'm always inspired every time I listen to you, just so, you know, <laughs> confident and joy, so much joy and happiness in, in you know, in your speaking and in your being. Uh, so, um, and, and I really appreciate that, you know, you, it's about our consciousness, right? You travel to the world. So when you started it, you already know this is global and you are already attracting people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so curious, you know, how did you, you know, when you mentioned that you dive in in India, right? And then you discovered your fear. And then how did you eventually like dissolve your fear or, you, you know, eventually like so faithfully taking actions and, uh, you know, bring your ideas into reality? How did you do that? That's a great question. So... There, that's there's many aspects there's many aspects to that to that answer it's not just one and one of them is the the mentors that I have they the support that's why it's so important to have the mentors because they support you and they make you believe in yourself sometimes you don't believe in yourself so you need others to believe in you to really push you forward when it comes to the mind the fear how do you dissolve that fear it's awareness, right? So that's what we're taught at the at the academy in India is when fear arises, everybody has fear. No matter who you are in the world, everybody has fear. Gurus, we all have fear. Everyone has fear. One of the times I asked the guru, we sat in front of him, which is the founder of the of the school. His name's Shri Krishnaji, and I asked him, "Do you have fear?" And he said, "Yes, I still have fear." And I, to me, that blew my mind. Like, how can somebody so enlightened have fear? And that's when I really, re I realized like everybody has, fear. if she Krishna Ji has fear, everybody has fear, right? And and he just said, I fear comes, but it, it disappears. It dissolves very quickly. As soon as it comes, it disappears. So the, the fear, really the aspect of fear comes through awareness. So when you see it coming in, it's really a realization or an observation of, ha, huh, it's just my mind. It's my mind playing tricks on me. I see it and you want me to play into it and create a story behind it because as soon as I create a story, I fall in victim. So it's not, not feeding to the story, not feeding into the mind and just observing it and allowing it to pass. That's why meditation is so important because when you close your eyes and you watch these thoughts come in, the, the, the idea of meditation is really a 
filter to of the thoughts of like clearing out the thoughts right so there's different ways to meditate because there's different aspects of meditation there's nurturing there's reflection meditations but the basis of foundation of meditation is when a thought comes in you observe it and let it pass it comes in and it passes it comes in and it passes and it really it, it increases focus that's the idea of meditation to really increase that focus so when when fear comes in it passes you'll see it and you let it go and you stay focused, you stay, you stay on your channel, you no matter what happens, no matter what's coming in and out, you're staying focused. And that's how you really just, it's like a horse, like, no matter what fear comes in, you're like, I'm staying here, I'm certain, I'm focused, this is where I'm going, no matter what tries to come through, this is where this is my path. So through that certainty, no matter what fear comes in, fear comes, you just observe it, and you let it go, you observe it, and you let it go. And that's one of the biggest tools that I got from that academy in India. And we, we teach this. That's one of the days, actually, at the festival. It's called Unleashing Your Peaceful Warrior, which really like unleashing your limitless self. And that's that's the idea. Letting go of these limiting beliefs, these thoughts that are trying to come in. And the reason why we're getting boggled down is because we're holding on to them. So as soon as we just let go of them, there's ease. There's lightness. So that's the... That's the that's the tool when it comes to dissolving fear and really just walking through that path with certainty. And the second aspect of it is the mentorship, the support, the ecosystem behind it of having those sovereign beings, other sovereign beings that are in a higher level than you are, that have already walked that path, that are like, yes, Meijing, no Meijing, do here, do that, or keep going. A lot of the a lot of the mentors that that I have. Um, are conscious obviously and when I say conscious they're very aware of of how they treat others of their actions of their words they're very conscious humans uh, so they don't actually tell me how to do things they just ask questions and they allow me to become a sovereign being through my creation they never say do it like this or do it like that they just they they encourage me to create through my own mind through curiosity so they ask me get curious, ask yourself questions. When I'm, when I'm lost or I feel like I don't know where I'm going, they, they encourage that curiosity aspect to come out. So it's really having those mentors that, that are, that are holding that space for you to continue to be a sovereign being. So that's, that's the aspect of how I've been able to really transform into this, into this human that's becoming more certain and more fearless and more aware of my, of my actions and how, how they come out to the world. So yeah, it's a, it's a little mix of, of different things. That's amazing. You know, like I remember you, know, you, you were saying, okay, you know, uh, the, you, you have this, uh, this facility issue and, uh, and I ask you, and you said, I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, you created it yourself, right? <laughs> In the face of challenges, <laughs> you just, Right now, you know, face out rather than backing off. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for mentioning it. That's yeah. exactly right. When yeah. there's a challenge, it makes me step further in. So yeah. most people back up. I step in. When yeah. I see a challenge, I step further in. I know yeah. it's something I need to dig further into. It's yeah. not something that I need to step out of. It's something that yeah. needs more energy. Yeah, so. I was I was so inspired. I asked you, okay, you know, you can do this or you can do this, but up to you. And you said, I would do this. <laughs> I'll face all. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I found a way. Yeah. Like, it's so beautiful because once you you walk with that clarity, that certainty, mm. you magnetize the solutions. Yeah. But most of the time we step back because of fear. So yeah. and, and I love it. I honestly, it's like almost like it's a thrill to just walk yeah. like you got this. So we just yeah. stepped into words. Yeah, and you inspires me so much. It's like whoa, you know. It's like a, <laughs> uh, so it's really through these practice, right? I sense practice of meditation and just thought and consciously, like eventually. You distance your consciousness from your fear, from your mind. And then you say, okay, I'm going to listen to my consciousness, listen to my word, what I say, what I would do, who I am. You know, like I am not really a creator. It's up to mm. me to create, right? This is mm. this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you separate the mind from the body. Because most of the mm. time, 
we're, we're most of us humans work from the mind because that's what we've yeah. been conditioned to do we think yeah. a lot we we create and make decisions on the from the mind and that's mm -hmm. why a lot of the decisions come from fear come from stress but if we step into the into our bodies into our hearts we can really step in with more clarity we're more ease more trust mm -hmm. so when we're making decisions it's not I'm not making it with fear. If I would have like that decision with the location, if I would have mm. made it with my mind, I wouldn't have mm. done it because my mind is fear. Yeah. My mind is limited. My yeah. mind tells me, Meijing, that you can't do anything because this is all you see. This is yeah. all you see right here. So how can you go any further? That's mm -hmm. the mind. But if you mm. take the mind out and you just step into that compass, that heart, the possibilities become expansive. Yes. It's, you're much more of an expansive being when you're when you step into that into that into that being yes. into that body. So, yes. yes, yes, really anything is possible. Um, mm. It's whatever you stand for, right? So um, in this world right now, we, we face, right? There's so much information, so much technology and so much different values, you know. Um, you see people are focusing on making money. You see people are focusing on entertainment. People are focused on whatever, right? And how do you not be distracted? How do you become so focused on your mission and uh, just raise a sharp focus to, and, and you know, just like fulfilling your missions? Like, how did you do that? It's the simple answer mm -hmm. is commitment to one thing. Mm -hmm. So when you're not sh it's clarity it's so mm -hmm. it's that commitment like the clarity of this is what i this is where this is my path mm -hmm. a lot of the problems that we see with youth or with humans is that we, we're either dabbling yeah. we're doing a lot of things because we don't want to miss out and we don't want to miss out on an opportunity so we try to do everything and we do nothing mm -hmm. or we do nothing because we're fear and we're scared and we just stay and do nothing. So mm -hmm. I'd rather just sit around and watch and scroll on, on my phone or watch TV because if I try anything, I'm going to fail. Yeah. So there's these two aspects that we're dancing with. Mm -hmm. And if you just delete both of them mm -hmm. and you just stick to just pick one thing, this is one of the workshops that we do at the universities is really that commitment that creating that certainty. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, there's no, I can't even get distracted Jing Hongji because I don't, like, I know that's not part of, I'm not, that's not part of like my, what I need to do. Like if yeah. watching TV is not part of the clarity, the the path that I'm walking. So yeah. it's so certain. It's so clear that yeah. I know that TV is not part of it. And I yeah. know that scrolling on social media is not part of it. Yeah. So when you're so clear, there's, there's no distractions anymore because yeah you're just walking this path anything that comes that tries to come and and, and distract you away from that yeah it's it can't it's very hard because you're so so focused on this one mission yeah. so that's really the answer to that that's how that's how i do it at least it's yeah clarity it's simple. clarity of who you are what your mission is and mm -hmm. then that that's just naturally drives you right yeah, yeah, and most and like I was t saying, it's uh, talking about in the morning earlier, like in the morning, right before mm -hmm. this, when this call started, mm -hmm. is most of us young adults or young minds, mm -hmm. we are we don't have that clarity. We don't know mm -hmm. what we want. What is it that I want? Yes, yeah. Beijing, I hear you. Don't get distracted because I you have a path, but I don't have my path. How do I find that clarity? Like I don't even know who I am. What am I? What is my role? I'm working at this nine to five job and I'm making money, but I'm not happy. And I know that, but what mm -hmm. is my, how, what am I supposed to be doing? What makes me happy? Mm -hmm. And what is my essence? So this is the problem that we have with most youth. And that's what I was speaking about in the beginning of this call is this is why a lot of us don't end up doing anything because we're so confused to what we should do. How do you find this clear path that I'm on right now? Right? So how do you find this clarity so I don't get distracted anymore. That's the real question. If you, yeah. And the real and, and the answer to that is, one, you take action. Mm -hmm. You have to take action, 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 because action, even if you fail, is going to give mm -hmm. you lessons. And it's going to tell yeah. you, mm, I didn't like that. Or yes, I like that. I'll do that a little more. That kind of felt good. So mm -hmm. it's also stepping into your body and not mm -hmm. your mind and saying, mm, that feels good. It's mm -hmm. And also when I, when I speak to other youth, I don't tell them, what do you think? I ask them. What do you feel? How mm -hmm. do you feel? 
because mm -hmm. the feeling is really what gives us the answers. Mm -hmm. So that's how we start finding that clarity is one, taking action and two, grasping the answers that we're, that we're, that we're getting from these actions and, and stepping into our bodies in the feeling of like, mm, it feels good. No, that doesn't, there's something off about that. I think I'm going to go this way and you just keep taking action sooner or later. You're going to find your path. And you're going to be like, this is it. This is exactly where I need to be. And there's no other distraction, but it's, it starts with action. And then after that, it's, it ends with really making decisions and connecting to your body, to your heart, to your intuition, to that. And that's also really, it's an art. It's not something that's like, oh yeah, your intuition, just follow your intuition. Everybody says that, right? Like, let's follow our intuition. But that's another art. Mm -hmm. It's how do you, how do you connect to your intuition? I've heard it for years. Yeah. Just listen to your intuition. It tells you everything. So difficult to even like, even it's hard. It's difficult to teach. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, to, to like explain. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you have to experience and feel again. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? It's taking action. And when something happens, oh, I'm processing it through my mind, not through my body. So it's connecting back to the body. The meditation helps a lot because it clears those thoughts. And when those thoughts are not running anymore, the channel goes straight to the body. There's no more thoughts. It goes straight to the body. So that's why meditation is so important. I use meditation as a practice. It's, it's like going to the gym. People go to the gym all the time, but they forget to go to the gym for their, their minds. It's, it's, quite, it's actually quite uh hilarious that we're taught to go to the gym every day and, and work on our physical bodies but completely forget about our minds which is 90 or 80 percent of who we are we work with college athletes and a lot of them are physically strong and fast but in their mind they're not so that's why they lose so that's what really differentiates the greatest from the the okay the mind so but it's funny because we don't we don't nurture that and nobody really teaches to nurture that. There's a lot of there's a lot of like, uh, yes, yeah, psychologists and mental well-being stuff, but they don't really tell, give you the tools to to really nurture that mind. Like go to the gym and, and work on your minds, your strength of the mind, the mental strength. So that's that's a huge, huge aspect of how do we really become that sovereign being is nurturing that mind so the mind can become clear and then you can really connect and step into that body so when you make decisions you're making decisions from a clear state from a calm present state and even if you make a bad decision you know it's going to be a, a good decision because you're going to learn something from it so there's no fear there's only learning and that's what we're here for we're here to learn i mean at least that's what i'm here for in this world it's it's really that journey of growing and learning when I, when I travel around the world and like, you know, you go to like the customs and say, what is your job? I hate that. I don't like when people ask me, what do you do for a living? And where are you from? Those are the two questions that everybody asks me. Where are you from? And what do you do for a living? Like it's the ridiculous questions in the world because you're labeling humans, right? You don't want to mm -hmm. put people in boxes. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I write student of life. What do you do? <laughs> I'm a student of life. Where are you from? I'm a world citizen. That's, that's the best I can do. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's my way around that one. So. <laughs> oh Even to God. life and where to sit in the yeah. <laughs> I'm a lie or I'm a world citizen. That's the truth. It confuses people even more, but you know what? It's the truth. So what yeah. am I supposed to do? Yeah. Mejiji, is it possible you lead us uh, a meditation? Let us kind of experience a little bit of how. Sure, do absolutely. Meditation? Yes. Yeah. Let me put some meditation music for you guys. Yeah. I also have a YouTube channel that's a reflective channel that I just started that I guide. Okay. I can put it afterwards so you guys can. Sure, you can probably share screen, you know, if you want to open a YouTube as guide or anything, you can share screen. Okay. Yeah. Let me open up my
share screen. Oh, wait, I'm not. Let me stop share. I need to share screen with, with sound. Mm -hmm. Can you hear my voice? I might have to turn off the screen yeah. so I can get closer. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Okay. So I'll guide you guys on a five to eight, yeah, like a five minute meditation just on the understanding of the mind, just so we can just dive a little deeper on what is it that we just talked about. <laughs> okay. So if you guys want to, if you're sitting in a chair, just sit with your spine erect, straight spine, very important. And have your hands on your lap, facing upward. And we're going to start by breathing consciously, which means with full awareness of your breath, you're going to take a deep inhale through the nose. And a deep exhale through the nose again. So you're inhaling. Exhaling twice as long as your inhalation. You're inhaling and exhaling. Continue breathing with full awareness of your breath. you're breathing, observe your mind and see where it's going. What is it feeling? What is it thinking? Is it stressful thoughts? Is it fear? Does it feel calm? Does it feel present? your mind wonder to this it go to the past to the future, what is a wonder? Just observe with no attachment, with no stories to the thought, just observe it. With full compassion. center and imagine a purple flame, a small flame the size of your thumb floating in the center of your forehead. If you can't see it, just feel it. Feel that flame move to the center of your brain. Feel it or 
see it moving to the center of your brain and feel it floating, feeling grounding you, centering you. This grounding energy is what connects us to our true essence to nature, to those around us, what keeps us present. We have it inside us this whole time, with distractions, thoughts, fear, keep us away from this grounding energy that's within us. Let's take three more deep, Inhalations and long exhalations. Thank you so much. Um, how do you address, I was thinking, how do you address, uh, you know, self-esteem issues nowadays? You know, you are uh, so distracted and need to compare, you know, uh, uh, afraid of being too fat, too thin, too this and too that, right? All of these uh, anxieties. How do, you, how do you help uh, our children to grow self-esteem? Uh, like how did you yeah how did you grow you know your self esteem self esteem is built through stepping into uncertainty mm. so for us to build certainty we must mm. step into uncertainty which mm. is very odd and weird to think about because <laughs> we have to step into something that makes us so uncomfortable mm. to really be certain right so mm -hmm. It's really that, it's stepping into certainty and that comes through action. Mm. So that's why everything that we do in the at the festivals is we take action, no matter what you learn. And then after we learn, we take action. Mm. You learn and then you take action. We don't mm. learn and then just, okay, that was a good, that was a good lesson. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. It's, I learn and I take action because the only way to really experience it and feel confident in yourself is by really stepping into that uncertainty. And the mm -hmm. more you step into uncertainty, the more certain you become. And that's why when I like step into these like really big challenges with mm -hmm. certainty and I, I got this, this is it. Mm -hmm. It creates more certainty. Like, oh, that was easy. I got that taken care of. Mm -hmm. So creates more certainty and through that you are able to tackle bigger and bigger problems i love that by stepping into the uncertainty now you see yourself the certainty is actually my own belief my own conversations yes 
my own creation. Yes. Oh, that's so powerful. What a wisdom. <laughs> yeah, and I love the experience show learning. I was uh, at a workshop and uh, there was an exercise where the teacher asked me to write down all my weaknesses, all my shortcomings, uh, you know, in big words uh, on a paper. And then he put the paper on my back and let me walk around in front of people, how I feel. So I was feeling like, oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> all of these are feeling bad and people are judging me, all of these. <laughs> and then at the end, you know, he he took the paper to me and it's like, uh, there's nothing on it. And it's like, oh, he, he just tricked me, right? And I realized that all my conversation was created by me. You know, nobody was judging me. Nobody was. Uh, <laughs> That's so powerful. Any, uh, I love that yeah, exercise. Yeah, nobody had any opinion about me. You know, it's like but I was uh, <laughs> seeing that people are judging me. You know, they, they're looking down me, upon me, or all of these. It's all my creation. I realized that, oh, my God, my... It's all me creating, you know, like who I am and also creating like how other people are looking at me. I'm creating how people are. And then one person told me like, you know, she felt heavy when I was walking in and I realized that I created that heaviness. It's all my mind, my thinking, right? <laughs> like mm -hmm. I really created the world. I really created other people, how people feel because it's exactly how I feel. Mm. so yeah i love these you know experiential learning I, yes yeah. absolutely because that's when you really feel it you're like oh yeah. shit, that's what that means because <laughs> yeah. before that i'm sure he explained it but you were like eh, yeah I get yeah it. I've, I've, I've learned that part. in i've learned that in theories many many times you know in many workshops but this one i never forgot i get it i get it <laughs> it's in my bone now it's like <laughs> I'm the creator of every, everything and everybody. <laughs> and in the world, I create it. <laughs> so powerful. Uh -huh. So yeah. powerful. That's what yeah. RQ Global really does. So we mm. bring different mentors, but mm. RQ Global as a foundation, besides creating the ecosystem, I yeah. really love to curate those workshops. Like to me, yeah. it's, it's an art and it's beautiful and it's very necessary. Yeah. So that's that's what we that's what we bring to the table to yeah. the festivals as an organization the workshop aspect of it yeah and yeah it's the best uh, because that's really where, where you experience life yeah i'm excited yeah I, my daughter and i we're going there and we look forward to it <laughs> so, i didn't even tell you so the space that we're doing it in uh -huh. the owner he uh -huh. is a global art sculptor and he oh. creates some of the most beautiful pieces and oh. they're all over the world. They're in Asia, Brazil, all over the world. He has these beautiful sculptures, huge in museums. Oh. And he's going to he's going to give us a class on how he creates these sculptures through through his art. And he's huh. a huge artist. He's really, really, really powerful. I love oh. him. So he, we're going to have an art workshop with him. So look forward to Yeah. <laughs> so Meijinji, can you share how people can register? You can share screen. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so the the link is called rqglobal.org, which is the mm -hmm. organization forward slash forward slash mm -hmm. youth festival. Super simple. Mm -hmm. So you'll see this, and this is the the idea behind you'll you'll read through it. So mm -hmm. it says right here, join us. Mm -hmm. You can attend virtually. We're gonna mm -hmm. have a virtual live, we're gonna have virtual live sessions twice a day. Mm -hmm. So the way the days are set up, in the morning we do we do in internal wisdom. In the late afternoon, more late morning, early afternoon, we do workshops, interactions, more of the activities. Mm -hmm. But then in the Late afternoon, like three to six, mm. we do live speakers where live speakers come in and they do their own workshops on. We have a lady that's doing alchemy. That's going to be super powerful. Seven days. I mean, the seven steps to reaching your full alchemized life. So she really helps you release everything that you're holding back and stepping into that true essence of yours. And that's day one. So 
through the virtual attendance, which I'll click it right here so everybody can see it, you'll have access to, to the morning wisdom. And here are the times, this is what you get, the end the afternoon live speaker. And then every day. So you have two live sessions every day through the virtual. That's what you get in the virtual, except for day four, because day four, if you're an in-person participant, we're going to be in nature. We're going straight into nature. We're disconnecting to any electronics. We're taking hikes to waterfalls. We're just going to be in nature and we're going to give wisdom in nature. So it's a virtual day off and we'll, we'll continue our live transmission on the last day, which is day five. Royal Mattis comes in live, which is an amazing, powerful human. And she's really going to walk us through unleashing that peaceful warrior. So that's what, that's what the virtual participant access looks like. It's really powerful. And again, we have translations in Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. So nobody's excuse of I don't speak English. And you just become a participant. And from this, you check out, you put your name, your date, you see, you um, you can day, do a one-day access and just do $55 for one day. We'll, you'll tell us what day you want on the notes. And if you want translation, you'll say, yes, I'll take translation. And this money goes directly to the translators. This doesn't go to us. It's just to pay back in gratitude to the translators that are really making uh, making this beautiful synergy of worlds come together. So this is the, the virtual. Now you want to become a participant and join us in person. This is a, this is the this is a beautiful creation because it's the full five days. We're in nature, we're sleeping in 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 tents, we're we're going to to what we're sleeping, we're going into the water, we're taking hikes in nature. So and really you're you're hanging out with the community and you get the first ever founders t-shirt so we're going to be giving out founder founding member t-shirts for every member that's in person for being the founding member at portland so we're going to have be giving those t-shirts out as a as a as a beautiful like memory of who the founders were in portland that came together in nature to really grow themselves so you get a founders t-shirt and then the next festival that we're going to have in Mexico City that hasn't really been announced yet, but it's gonna, it's coming soon. After this festival, we'll announce it. We'll have another Founders t-shirt for Mexico City, but they're all unique. They're all extremely uh, beautiful. And by, by joining these in-person events, you get to be part of that founding member community. And so, yeah, so you pick your lodging. So you put your billing. The lodging is automatically already the, the dorm style lodge, which is the um, the most popular, which is the tent. And then the coupon code. If you have a coupon code, you can ask Jing Hong Ji. He has a coupon code and you apply it. I think it's Jing Hong 30, if I'm not mistaken. And then you just place your order. And, and, that's, and that's that. It's actually quite simple. So... And then you get to join us in Portland for five days in nature. We do live music every night, campfires. We meditate. We we do yoga. We have Dharma Day with all these speakers. And you want to dive deeper into what happens in each day. This is what happens in each day. And then our speakers are very, very, very powerful. There's Jing Hang Ji. We have very, very powerful mentors that are coming together and really stepping in for the for the youth. So that's that's what it looks like. So you can attend virtually, become a participant, or if you don't have the funds and you want to become a sponsored youth, you can click on here and you'll you'll be directed to a sponsored page. It might be a little late to register as a sponsored youth, but you can still try. And it's actually a quite easy application. You apply now, it's a questionnaire. You put in a link with why you want to be why you want to be a participant. And, and that's it. So we have opportunities for anyone and everyone. If you're not in America and you don't have a visa, you can attend virtually. If you're in America and you want to be in person because you really want to feel that essence, the nature, the community aspect, and really get the workshop, the experiential learning, then you come in person. And if you're, you can't travel because you have work or whatever, you can attend virtually as well. If you don't have the funds, you can become a sponsored youth. And that's what it looks like. So I'll share this link with Jing Hangji so you can share with the community 
It's rqglobal.org forward slash youth festival. Well, thank you so much, Mei Jinji. Uh, I'm always inspired. <laughs> Just your enthusiasm, your your commitment is amazing. So thank you so much, really, really. Yes, really together we're stronger. So yes, come in, yes. everyone. More energy, the stronger we are. Let's change the world together. This is this is how we do it in a yes. peaceful, powerful way. Yes, thank you.